Today's video is going to be beginner friendly and we're going to build a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate prismatic cell battery bank for solar but with eight battery cells. So typically if you're trying to make 12 volts with lithium iron phosphate you need only four battery cells. But a lot of people are constrained by the size of the cell and you have a limit to how large these can get. So if you can use more cells and you know how to arrange them, you can make a really large 12 volt or even 24 or 48 volt battery bank. It's very easy to do. And when you know how to arrange the cells, you can add a 4S BMS to control all eight battery cells. And you could even use 12 or 16 battery cells. As long as you know how to arrange these cells, you can use a single BMS for all of them, even at a lower voltage. What you wanna do is put them in parallel pairs. And when these battery cells are in parallel, they act as one cell. And if you take four parallel pairs and you connect these all in series, you will have 12 volts. And this will act as your first cell, second cell, third cell and fourth cell. And this might sound simple at first, but a lot of people make the mistake of putting their cells into series first and then putting them all into parallel. That is not how you want to do it. And this is also scalable. So instead of putting them in pairs, you could have three cells or four cells in parallel, and then you put all of those in series. So now let's actually put this pack together. And to make this dead simple, we are going to arrange the battery cells like this. So we have a positive and a negative like this positive and negative and all the way through to the end and then we're going to add bus bars to all of these so that we can put these individual cells in parallel we have positive negative positive negative positive negative all the way to the end and this will be the main negative and this will be the main positive for our battery and we're going to connect these in series with these bus bars And now that one, two, three, and four cells are in series, let's check the pack voltage. And we have 13.35 volts. Now we're gonna learn how to add a BMS or a battery management system to this battery. So first you need to disconnect the balance lead. And when you look at the balance plug, you will see a black wire and this will go to the first cell negative and this will be the main negative of the battery. Now that we have the negative, we need to do the first cell positive and that is just the next wire on the balance lead. So you wanna connect this to the first cell positive and then the next wire will be second cell positive. And now we have all the cells connected to our balance lead. Now look at your BMS and find a wire that is labeled B negative. Typically it is blue. And you wanna add this to the main negative terminal of your battery. And now that we have the balance lead connected and the BMS, we can plug the balance lead into the BMS. And the moment you connect this cable, this BMS will be active and you will have power right here. So this will be the main negative of your battery pack and you'll have the main positive. So all of your inverters and solar charge controllers need to go through the BMS and the positive terminal of your battery. Before we add things to the system, let's test the voltage and we've got 13.35. Check the voltage at the P minus and the B minus, and if it's the same voltage, you are good to go. If you have a very low voltage at the P minus, that means you need to short it out at the negative terminal and then it will activate the BMS. So it's nice to have the cells arranged in this way so that we can see the first, second, third, and fourth cell and add the BMS and it's great for beginners, but we need to rearrange these cells so they're not taking up so much space because this is not a logically configured battery pack. So we're gonna rearrange these real quick. And check it out guys, we have first, second, third, and fourth cell. So we have the main positive right here and the main negative right here. And then we have our balance cable attached to all the cells. So we can now plug it in. And now our system is activated. I used these larger bus bars so I could differentiate each of these cells so that beginners can look down and make sense of it. But if you are building this pack at home, you want all of these cells close together with the bus bars that they come with. 
But if your battery does not come with enough bus bars, you're gonna have to order some extra ones or make your own if you need to. If you bought these cells new, they will be charged to the same voltage and you can connect them all together. It is safe to put them in parallel because if you buy them from the seller that I recommend, they will be all the same voltage. So you can connect them all together, add a BMS, in a matter of minutes and have a battery going. What you need to do now is connect an inverter and a solar charge controller. If you buy the BMS, use the separate port for solar power. It will have an extra wire coming out of it and it will be labeled C negative and it will be for your solar charge controller main negative. The next thing you want to do is mount the BMS somewhere close to the batteries. So if you have a wall right next to the batteries, you can use double-sided adhesive and stick this onto that wall. But what you don't want to do is have this BMS connected directly to the cells because this will heat up and you don't want your cells to get too hot. Another thing to think about is if you're building large battery banks with these cells, you need to make an enclosure where there's an insulator like plexiglass or some kind of insulator that covers all of these terminals. Because if you drop a tool across one of these terminals or even one of these terminals sparks will fly out this will get really hot and it can possibly damage these these will push as much current as they can through this conductor so very dangerous you want to cover this battery and protect it as much as you can also, this BMS is rated for 60 amps of continuous discharge current. I definitely recommend using only 40 amps if you want this to last a long time. If you need like 200 or 300 amps, please check out my website for other options in my complete lithium iron phosphate systems. And that's pretty much it. These are very easy to configure and arrange if you know how to put them in parallel and then series second. So I hope you guys found this video useful, a quick little tutorial. And yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions below and I'll talk to you later. Bye.